and you heard it. The boss lady said I can get pigs. Hey guys, welcome back to KNS Get Out. Today you get us at my favorite time of day. Especially during I've been waiting all day for this. I don't know if you can hear the orchestra, but they're down there and they're talking. Herc's got his toy. Everybody's gathering in the nursery to come out and graze. It's a little nerve wracking because you don't typically want all the goats in that tight of a pack <laughs> and then have Mr. Herkman right in the middle. But it's evening feeding time. And I want to talk about some of the benefits that we've seen, some of the drawbacks that we've seen from getting them out so much. And if I'm being honest, the only, no, there's two drawbacks. One, they ask Hi. for it all day, every day. Come on, goat herd. Let's just get on out here. Oh, we're oh, not Kirk. even. Yeah, Kirk, yeah. Kirk, Kirk, Kirk. Come hey. here, buddy. <laughs> Shoot. You forgot a step. I'm gone, mommy. I'm going to go check out everything. Oh. And I got my honker toy. I didn't think that through. <laughs> I'll get his leash and collar. Uh, you know, we only do this like every single day of our lives. But no, the evening time, man, it's, I mean, just guys, this is where it's at. I gotta be honest, we don't get up early enough and we don't look ready for video early enough to get you as many sunrises as we enjoy. Uh, typically we're in the recliners looking out through our little camper window while we're drinking our caffeine for the morning. But sunrise, sunset, those are the times where it's just, I mean, I, I'm not, I can't give it words, I don't have to. Now that things are greening up, goaties are coming out, they're getting to eat and forage and not by jumping off of Herc's house. Yeah, who would ever do such a thing? That's a bad idea. Don't ever do that, goaties. I've been trying to tell them, Dad. Good job, Spreasers. This is our favorite time of day. Evening feeding specifically, I gotta say, it's probably my favorite time of day from now until the sun goes down. And of course, getting into summer, the sun's gonna stay out till 9, 9.30, uh, at least in our area. I don't I know even... where it is. Do what? I don't know where his leash and collar is. Uh oh, uh, right oh, it's there. Right here. There it is. So sometimes Shannon forgets, and by Shannon I mean me. Uh, after I get everybody out and put them up, because I did it by myself last time, I forget to put things back where they go. You and forget to put things back where they go. But I was Ever. influenced by wasps. My hay shed. Whoo! I just picked up a can of wasp spray off the ground over by the hay shed. Why was it on the ground? I, I bet a wasp put it me. there. Oh, I know why. Yeah, because I needed it on the outside of the hay shed so I could get into the hay shed. It's right when you open up the door. It's on the floor right to the right. So Thank it's not you. like you have to go all the way in and get it off a shelf. I have to go in with the wasp to get it? No. No, you just got to open the door. Your arms are long. Man, I got to admit, the last couple of days it's been beautiful. It's been warm. But the I call them the scouts. I have not done my research on wasps and who comes out first and blah, blah, blah. But I think there are scouts that come out first part of the season. They want to see if the terrain has changed. They want to see if where they kept their queen last time has changed. And I'm making all of this up based on my own hatred for wasps. Okay, I have to say though, we actually got a screenshot that somebody sent us. So in our last video, when we're walking down the driveway, there was a wasp scouting you. It was flying over your head, but I it actually out. had it on film and somebody sent us a screenshot of, we saw it scoping you out. Dude, it, I, yeah. you know, I know, I know, I'm a wuss, blah, 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 blah. I'm not afraid of people. I'm not afraid of big animals. I'm not afraid of a lot of different things. I'm afraid of wasps. Ugh. I don't want to get stung. So anyway, uh, I can't go in the hay shed. So I'm going to do, I, I used some WD-40. Actually, you guys told me about that last season. And I put that up on the eave on the front of my shed. And it did seem to help. And they are also coming in my shed, which I, I figured they would. But I'm just killing them, man. I'm dropping them right and left. And I feel like last year I did the same thing. I was, I was quick to attack early. He's over there just mm -hmm. sniffing. He is. And it helped a lot. <clears throat> Come here, so Eric. I, I think by spraying and if I'm being real honest, killing the ones very early, they're like, oh, this might not be a good spot. If that scout doesn't come back to report positive things about that area, the queen's not going to say, put me there. I might be crazy. I don't know. You no, are I am crazy. Such I do a know. Good boy. But I just don't like them. 
So we're fighting them, and uh, the hay shed is my next target for getting all the attention it needs to keep them out of there because I don't have the head clearance in there to <laughs> deal with wasps right there on the ceiling being eye to eye with me. <sighs> Can't do it. You are so Anyway, good. back to the point of this video. These guys don't mind my junkyard. We, we got to go to the scrapyard. I actually just talked to Dad, Grandpa Doss Farms, about a week ago about what you do with metal scrap. Never had that problem before. We never did anything like this. But I've got a lot of scrap that has metal in it and I can't burn it, you know? I like to, I like to burn most of my lumber scrap and any firewood or limbs that come down. But metal, it's gotta go to the scrap yard. And so I think I've got enough now to make it worth the trip. And apparently they pay you a little bit. There you go. Oh no, she got you, didn't she, buddy? He did so good. I'm so proud of I mean, him. I'm a good dog. He even like just sat there and let me put his collar on him. Yeah. And... Where are you going with my buddy, mom? Hey, Sprucers. Hi, mom. You've been waiting all day for this, nom, huh? Nom, 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 nom. Nom, nom, nom. Every time we came outside, you guys yelled at us. Well, this is what we've been wanting. Come on with it. <laughs> Do you notice, does anybody else notice, if you're looking at him, and I can't zoom because my hands are full. Got it. I know, this is going to be a stretch. Some of you are going to say, no, he's still overweight. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, that's how he stayed warm through the winter. And he's a growing goat, man. They, they got to grow in the midsection and stretch out. Bruno did the exact same thing. Not quite as drastically as spruce, but it's what animals do. Makes sense. But if you notice, if you've been paying close attention, look at how healthy these goats are looking. We are literally down to 50% of the grain feed that we were when we first mentioned cutting back on the feed. And the way it was explained to me, you know, they obviously don't come by grain, grain pellets naturally in the wild. If these were wild goats, they would never ever get grain feed like that. But, hi <laughs> <laughs> buddy, yeah. Mr. Hercules. Photo bomb. I love you, buddy. I'm a good boy. Are you being a good boy? Yeah, I know. He likes to graze too. Oh, oh. Thank you. But what we have done to make that transition easier, because they would have thrown a fit if I just took their grain away, which I'm not going to take it away completely because I do like to have them grain trained. And then especially in the winter time when there's nothing to forage on and we're just going, I mean, burning through the hay. I like to supplement with grain, but I've had a lot of conversations with dad and dad's actually had, dad, Grandpa Doss Farms, he's had a lot of conversations with different vets, different farmers, different folks, and ultimately, you know, grain is okay. It's totally fine. It ain't gonna hurt them. It'll fatten them up. You give too much and it'll fatten them up and weathers, it's a male goat that's been banded, they, are a little more susceptible to building up, I believe it's calcium, uh, inside their, their urinary tract. And one of the quickest ways a goat is in bad health or bad shape or you know close to death or whatever is if you block up any part of their system, especially going to the bathroom, poop or pee, whatever. And so that grain can be a little more inducive of blockages. And we've heard that from multiple professional uh, animal care people, vets, or farmers and we just don't we don't want that you know so this natural forage exactly how they were created to feed is perfect for them not to mention they love it miss mama lair bear look at you buddy getting smart but what I have noticed, it's literally only been, I believe, a week, maybe just a hair over. Hey, when did we start getting them out to graze every single day? It's been about it's a week. It's been about a week. All right. Yeah. So it's only been about one week. And I can see a drastic difference, especially in Spruce and Luigi and Mama. Obviously, Luigi Babe. and Mama. Kirk thinks he's a goat. <laughs> I know. I've seen it before. He comes out to graze just like the goats are. He's like, that's not, that's not good, Mom. He's, I don't he's like trying it. it. He's tried several different things. I don't like it, but I'll try it a couple more times. <laughs> he does Sorry. that with the hay sometimes, too. He does. It's hilarious. 
But I want you to look, and, and if you're not you know, an avid watcher, if you don't see every single video, go back uh, just a few months, back when it was really cold, and look at this wide body, not the bee hole. He's, he's a little bit thinner. And I know it's hard to say, especially for Shannon and I, because we see them every single day, but I can actually tell it when I pet him. I can feel, I think he's probably four inches narrower overall. That's two on each side. Mama, look at her. That girl doesn't have those real, now she always kind of keeps <laughs> these little fluffs right here, at least here on Shady Acres, but it ain't nothing like it was when she, I don't know, she was about three months after having the boys, that boy and that boy, who are now just about as big as her. But she carried saddlebags, you know, like on a motorcycle, she carried some saddlebags and uh, they're not there. I mean, it disappears that quickly. This guy, this guy especially, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about me, Dad, uh -huh. mm -hmm. You're looking good, buddy, looking good. So if I'm being honest, not only is it a huge cost savings because we're not going through as much hay, we're not, I mean, we're literally going through half the amount of grain. So the amount of money we were spending on the grain will be cut in half. And I will probably continue to work that down a little bit. Daisy girl, come here, babe. Earl man, there's a little bit of barbed wire over there. I don't want and, her to get spooked and run into it. Well, they honestly, I've been worried about that too. I've got to get that cleaned up. I, they've been spending more and more time over here since they found honeysuckle right over here. And they love that. Plus all that green you see right there, that's that coral berry. Those are the same plants that are growing down in Goatville that we learned very quickly. They love the leaves off that. Everything they're eating right now, that's all coral berry. But these goats are never happier than they are when they are grazing. They're happy and excited for grain, but it is so different. They want to graze, they want to forage, and they know exactly what they like. They know exactly what they can have, what they can't have, and it's actually incredible to watch them inspect things and then move on <laughs> and then find other things and get after it. Spruce is telling Larry he found a spot he doesn't want him to have a piece of. I'm glad they're eating this stuff over here though because this tree is an Osage orange tree and it's just like growing out of control so we definitely need to do some trimming on it but you can't do that whenever you've got stuff like coral berry growing oh, underneath it. <laughs> well and quite honestly you know I'm learning now that when it's time to cut down trees and things like that it's not during spring and summer. No. Not you at mark all. them in spring and summer to know if they're dead or identify them, but that ain't the time to get after them because no. you're gonna find things inside those trees that won't harm you. <laughs> and obviously all this undergrowth, this is all within the last two weeks or so that it's come up. So yeah, I think it's pretty uh, common sense to say that goats eating what they naturally would eat if they were just wild goats out in a forest or a pasture or whatever, that's ideally what they need to be eating. But they not only enjoy themselves out here, they beg for it. So anytime they see us outside, if we're working, especially if we're working close to the pen, we, we got some talkative goats now. I think the babies kind of bring it out. The goatlets, they're the loudest talkers. They talk about anything and everything. And they call mama, Miss Blue, and she calls back and it's a whole thing. But all the big goats are like, hey, maybe the babies will get them to come down here for us. And so they... <laughs> they put them up to it. They put them up to it and they get their job done, I can tell you that. But we do have to be careful. And I, I have not looked up, I don't know the specifics, I'm more so just kind of reading them. Like we did a minute ago, I look at their, their width because their rumen is filling up as they're eating. They got that four chamber rumen stomach, more or less. I think they also technically have a stomach. But that's where all this is going. That's where it gets ground up. And they can, goats can get bloat, which ultimately will kill them. So we time it. What did I say our record is? Like an hour and five minutes. I think an hour like and that. five is, is our longest. Yeah. And to be honest, they, 
<laughs> He's you, just chilling. Are, are you are you having a pity party or? Well, he wanted to wander and I told him that we had to stay put for just a little bit. He's My pouting. Handsome herd. You're pouting a little bit, aren't you, Bubba? Love you, big guy. You're modeling is what you're doing. He's so good. I'm modeling everybody. Look at my left side. This is my good side. Wait, wait, wait. This front side is also pretty good too. Hang on, look at Are that Are you a little one. jealous I took some pictures of Bruno instead of you? Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that, but I didn't want to do it on camera because I don't want people to think I'm rude or selfish or anything like that, but I am. <laughs> you don't love when your little brother gets all the attention and you don't, huh? I know it, Bubs. Is this... There's glass under it. Yeah. So he's been learning to share his time with little Mr. Bruno, who we got to get out still three, four times a day. And the older he's getting, the battery capacity inside of him is extending. And, and so, his bladder's getting bigger. And his bladder's getting bigger, but he still manages to pee like six to 11 times per outing. I kid you not. You don't know anything about that, do you? I don't no. do that, Mom. No, you don't do that, huh? This guy uses all his bodily fluids to mark things. And he has a lot. <laughs> he can walk the entire trail and he's still got some left by the time we're done. That's both number one and two. Hey, but America, it's I wish you'd let me brush intentional, you. isn't it, bud? My good boy. You are shedding like crazy, man. My good boy. I tried to use that brush on him and he did not like it at all. Yeah. He kind of likes his dirty. He likes his dirty. He likes his fur. So in one of our very first Q and A's, I think it was actually our very first Q and A, uh, one of the questions was, do you have any regrets about everything that we've done out here? And, you know, we, we sold the house in the city, came out here, had the 20 acres. Do you have any regrets? And that only regret was that there was a barn here. And it honestly, if you go back, check out that video, it was in the very early days. It was a gorgeous, classic barn. Now, I didn't feel that way when we first started this process because we were not homesteaders. We were not country folks or whatever. But there was a barn here. It was leaning really bad. It Yes, it would have needed a large amount of structural construction to get it back to a functioning barn because the water coming down this hill right here, they had no channel, no drain or anything on the right side of this barn. And so for who knows how many years, it just kept getting blasted. And the posts that they use on the outside were starting to just deteriorate. And it was, it was leaning really bad. There was a tree actually kind of holding it, not completely, that's in that video. However, there has always been, since the barn was there, there's been this semi-completed pin, and you see all these partial, I assume they're telephone or power poles, they're all over the place. And so they had, I don't know what kind of animals they were trying to raise, but it basically went down here and over here and up here, and then just lived on this slope. Well, since we've been letting the goats out and we found honeysuckle, we found all this coral berry, they love coming in here. The problem is this mess right here. Fortunately, they have all been smart enough because of our electric fence. I don't know, whatever they're used to. They've all been smart enough to stay out of the barbed wire. In fact, the only one we've had a problem with hitting barbed wire was that guy in the early days. Yeah. And it, it scared him. Made like him... Duke just walked over the barbed wire just now. I just watched him. Dukey, you're so smart, buddy. I know, thank you. <laughs> My mommy teaches me everything. I do believe she teaches them quite a bit. But I'll be real honest, this is not a place that Shannon and I have spent any time or attention on because we didn't really have a need. It wasn't top of the priority list, but now the goaties are loving that area and we're gonna have to do something about it. And to add to the fun of doing something about it, in other words, cutting all that barbed wire out, which is, that won't be too bad at all, but getting all that out of there, pulling these guys out, we're gonna see how that goes. I've got a few different strategies or hypotheses. You're gonna try to pull those out? I'm getting them out of there. You are? Oh yeah, they can't stay. I just figured we'd like do something with them. 
I don't know. Correction, my wife and I are gonna talk about specifically <laughs> what we're gonna do with those posts. I don't know, we could, we could maybe use them. I mean, you never know, we might want like some pigs over here or something. You heard it. But if you look here, Mr. Hair Bear, that that's, standing dead tree. That's Lair Bear. Golly, I am my father's <laughs> son. <laughs> Larry, I am so sorry, buddy. Larry, Harry, Carrie, Mary, Terry, whatever. That tree right there, I said standing dead. That's no longer a standing dead. And if you look right here between Luigi and who is that, Earl Man? Uh -huh. Earl Man. There's actually barbed wire that was in the side of that tree and we had a real bad storm and that's a big tree. You guys know how big Weege is. Look at him standing next to it. All of them gonna use it. Yeah, there you go. Spruce ain't scared. He'll go out over the long part. Nah, not worth it. Ain't nothing to eat over there. Why would I go over there? Not happening, not happening. Nom, 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 nom. But yeah, that tree came down. And the fun part of that is, I gotta do something about it. Size 13 boot, about a foot long. That's uh, every bit of, man, 24 to 32 inches across, probably on the higher side. But look at this problem. These are things you gotta look for whenever you're doing stuff like this. This right here is not a dead tree, but this dead tree took that live tree down. So now that's gonna be a dead tree. And so right there, you can see the break. You can see where the tension now exists. And if I were to take a chainsaw and just start cutting that right there and just go right through it like you would, boy, that could snap off of there, get me in the face. There's no telling what that would do or what this right here would do. So we're gonna be a little bit careful with that one. I'll probably just kind of do some, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna share this and then a lot of you are gonna comment and say, hey, do this instead. But I may just kind of do some relief cuts back here, just little bits at a time, little bits, maybe kind of move them up and down a little bit. And eventually, once it starts to kind of pop and splinter on its own, because it's under so much pressure, I will know how much time I have or how many cuts I have until I can finally relieve that tension. This is a tough, tough spot to get the tractor. This hill, this elevation is so drastic. I could probably come in from back here. I don't know. What's my point? This is now on the project list and not the easiest project we have, but that's okay. I would like to reclaim this hillside, put this to use. And you heard it. Boss lady said I can get pigs. Uh, there are stipulations to that first. The boss lady said I can get pigs. Get ticks? Is that what I said? You got ticks? One right there. Goodness. He gonna die. That, by the way, is not a Lone Star tick. Yes, my hands are dirty. That's how we live. But you don't see the white spot on his back, which is very, very easy to see on a Lone Star. Oh no, he got away. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Let me make sure. Yeah, he gone. But yeah, that is, uh, that's Tick Central. I did do a little bit of a controlled burn over here because the goats do spend time in here. Bruno likes to come in here and I would love to get some of these saplings and stuff out of here to let these big oaks flourish and also get some more growth on the ground floor, giving them more to eat next season. Boy, I feel like a homesteader slash country person at this point, starting to kind of see it all, see the visions. Here's our number one challenge though with getting them out and grazing. The guineas and herc go that way whenever they want to escape. They wanna go, and that is neighboring property. Our property line is probably, I'm gonna say 40 feet to the right of my hay shed up there. So, I don't know, somewhere back there. And when we get over here, they're like, hey, we haven't eaten over there, and boom, they start going. And Blue led that effort, Miss Blue. And it was not easy to stop them. The closer you get, the faster they go. <laughs> so you got to get one or two on your side for animal crackers and then start working them back. Speaking of which, babe. Kurt, let's go this way. Come, come on, on, guys. Luigi come here, goaty goats. Bruce. Usually, come on, Larry. if they haven't come been on, too long, they'll listen and come up here. But if they feel like they've cleared everything out that they wanted to up there, they're not going to follow. I feel like if we can win Spruce or Ouija over, 
Yeah, they were coming. Most of the rest will follow. Weege man. Weege. Bruno's awake. <laughs> Is he bouncing around in there? Yep. Oh, speaking of dog update. Herkman, come here, bub. This rock star, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. This guy is actually growing. I know it. He's like, I don't want to show it off. I know it. But he's got probably an eighth to a quarter of an inch of growth of nail on top of that quick. I don't believe it's just callousing. Uh, that is a thing. A lot of you guys have actually told us that, that some of your dogs have lost them. <laughs> Hang on just a minute. Some of your dogs have lost them and they never grew back, but it forms like a callus over the quick so that it doesn't continue bleeding or bothering them. But I think I'm seeing some nail growth, which makes me very happy. That's super exciting. But I've had no yelps. I've had no three-legged runs. I've had no moments of him just hovering it or anything. And he's been in with the goats full time and he hasn't been bleeding. And he hasn't been bleeding, no bleeding at all. So I think we're on the mend here. It's probably been about four or five nights that he's been in there with him full time now. It's probably it's been, been longer. It's been about a week. It's been about a week. You guys know better. It was, you know, a couple of few videos ago. But Herc's doing great. We are still working on this area over here. This is that area that Kyle did all the clearing and everything. We're still working on that. I've been going in a little bit at a time and just walking around and making piles of sticks that need to be burned, just stuff that's on the ground and kind of cleaning it up so that Kyle can come back with the tractor and push over or pull out any of the trees that we want to take down instead of cutting them down. So that's still a work in progress. We're making a little bit more headway in there, but that butterfly got me. <laughs> <laughs> I got you paranoid. Um, we actually have it to where we have almost a full path reaching up to our other trail. So that's really cool. And it's just going to take a little bit of work, but I'm excited about this area over here. I am too. And I, the camera, there's no way you're going to be able to show them from here. But the piles that you made, I think you got one, two, three, four, five, six, I think I maybe have. seven. Uh, a bunch. <laughs> I'm really ready to burn them, but we have had insane wind for I don't even know how long. I think today the gusts were up to like 40 -ish. Yesterday they were 40. I think today only like 30. Okay. Yeah, yesterday was worse, but I've got stuff I need to burn over there to get ready for the chicken coop area. And I want to do, I'm going to practice my control burning. I'm going to keep doing it. I know that technically it would be better, like I mentioned last time, it'd be better when they're kind of fluffier and haven't been rained on and pressed down but it's probably a little bit safer because they are, the fire doesn't go nearly as well as I would want it to, but I've got a lot of fire breaks in there. And if I don't, I'm gonna use retired Ralph's Rental Emporium's backpack blower, make me a good path or the tractor rake if I need to. Yeah. And I, I think it's a very effective method to controlling pests and ticks and all that stuff. So probably gonna be a new annual routine. I think that's a great idea. Herc hears Bruno through yeah. the walls. I want to go see that little guy. I don't know that you actually do want to see him, though. Well, I didn't tell you what I wanted to do once I got to him, but <laughs> I do want to see him. I want to taste his food. I want to eat his toys. I want to eat him. I had him out last night, got him all grazing, had this guy out with me. And sometimes we do those things, you know, I do it, Shannon will do it, whatever. So I was by myself. Birds are alerting. So 
So I was by myself and I'm keeping an eye on the goats. Herc's doing great at just kind of wandering around, but the guineas apparently forgot we were, you know, out here right there with him and Herc got within an inch of a guinea. I kid you not. One really? inch. I was like, oh no. The guinea, of course, turns, freaks out, starts flapping and trying to, you know, I'm going to take off. Did you get that guinea, Herc? No, he 100% was just watching it like, What's wrong with you? <laughs> it takes off and he didn't follow, didn't chase, just watched it, left it alone. Good job, Herc. So it was a very positive moment. I was very proud of him and he got super praised for it. Good job, Herc. It's not a turkey, Mom. If it's a turkey, they're aggressive. Not one tried to kill me, so I tried to kill it. <laughs> Why are you hiding your face? <laughs> You're so funny, Herc. He's like, I got your back. He is, he's just the best. He's a guard dog through and through. He's a good boy, and he likes ear scratches. Bird birds, are you leaving eggs back here? No way, no way, no way. I sure would love to know where they're laying their eggs, but I'm pretty convinced it's not a centralized location. I'm pretty sure it is just wherever they happen to be in the moment that it's time for them to lay. I don't know. Ninja. Nice moose, Bruce. I know. They're great. One of the best. Nom nom. Hi, Air Bear. That's a boy. What do you think, Blue? Are you going to lead the train? Come on, Spruce. I push it. Because he pushes on me. Mom, can I have a um, Earl t-shirt, please? Earl the Poosher. That's with four O's. Do you want to say the Poosher or do you want to say the Earless Wonder? Ooh, that's good too. Or what about Earl the Poonisher? Get it? Punisher? Yeah, I'm like a punisher, you know? Like, I'll show you the business end of these horns if you want a piece of it. You're so strong. I know. You're so strong. So strong. Mom, you gotta fall back like I pushed you so hard. Okay, ready. Ready? Oh, oh, I broke you, broke you. You oh, got no. me. I'm sorry, Mom, I didn't mean to hurt you. It's okay, oh, it's okay. okay. I'm scared. It's okay. See my mohawk? It's, it's, it's you handsome. Do have your That's mohawk. a nice oh, mohawk. Up. I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to go. Oh, goodness. We yeah, he's gonna push you. Love. Spring and summer evenings. This is just, the temperature's perfect. The wind has actually died down. Yeah. The sun is setting. The colors are gorgeous. The goats were really good, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> actually, everybody was really good while they were out crazy. They were, and nobody yeah. tried to escape today. That's even better. Yeah, we're learning how to kind of coerce them to go the yeah. way we want them to. Well, now we just wait for the sun to drop a little bit further. We're gonna go make some dinner and wait for some guineas to put themselves up, and then we'll go close the door behind them. The triplets are going to the vet tomorrow. They're gonna to get banded and get their vaccinations. And Bruno also goes to the vet tomorrow for his second round of shots. Yeah. So tomorrow's a super busy day for us. But yes, it is. It's all good. Yeah, but I'm hoping to get clean bill of health from everybody. Everybody seems to be doing well. <laughs> Which is one of those giant mosquito thingies. Sure, tell yourself that. I saw it. Oh, okay. So we're hoping to get good reports on everybody and of course getting the bands on these boys makes it less likely that somebody accidentally gets pregnant because we don't need more goats. No, not at all. 
Or dogs. We don't need more dogs, mommy. <laughs> no I more. agree with that, Hercules. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to come in here and let you know that. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. We thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Are you trying to clean up your baby boy? Hi, Bluesy. Oh, you're doing great, hey. aren't you? You're doing great. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Get you back the way you were before you had them babies and had to be isolated. Yeah. This makes me happy. I know, you're watching her. Hi, Earl. Get a little jelly.